Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here. I'm Melissa. This is Matilda. And yeah, so today I just wanted to talk about um, how Matilda became my official emotional support animal. So she's an 11 year old long haired chihuahua. Um, she's a diva. She's beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, so she's actually been having health issues recently. And so if you see like some of my other videos, actually, I think the first videos that I've made um, were all about her just because I wanted to document, uh, you know, us having fun, her learning new tricks. And then I also wanted to have video footage of uh, some of her episodes that she has. We're pretty sure it's heart disease. And so um, at times she'll have episodes where she'll collapse, she'll cry. Um, so it's very scary. She's doing better now. She's on medication now. Um, but still, I, I still want to keep those videos so I can show her doctor. And then if anybody else like looks up, you know, symptoms or other things about heart disease, they'll see uh, her experiences on there. But anyway, yes, so we're going to talk about how she became my emotional support animal. So I would say she officially became my emotional support animal back in 2008, so like nine years ago. Um, and yeah, but let's go back even further. Let's go back to how I got Matilda. It's a funny story and it's like one of my favorite ones to tell. So here we go. I was 16 years old and I've always been an animal person and I have two older sisters. And so growing up with my grandmother who raised us, we would always get in trouble for coming home with a stray dog or like finding kittens in the bushes across the street and accidentally bringing two of them home. You know, like we always got in trouble for that. Like my grandma, she was so like loving, but she was also very stressed out. I mean, she was raising three girls under the age of like 10, you know, like all, we were all so close and also fun. We were good girls, but we also, you know, we're up to things, you know, wanted to get animals, we wanted to have fun, we had to, we had to make fun, you know, we had to make our own fun, and it was great. But anyway, so I'm 16, and I'm at the bank. I had been working since I was like 13 years old, uh, mostly like with my uncle, and then I had done little side jobs at the church and stuff, but I got my first real job when I was 15 and a half, because that's like the youngest you can work, or you could work at that time in California. So anyway... I was 16, I was at the bank, uh, depositing one of my paychecks, I guess, and in line, I meet this lady who has the cutest little chihuahua puppy in her hands, like, just a little baby, and mind you, this was back at, back in the time where, like, Paris Hilton and her little chihuahua, like, was all the rage, everybody wanted chihuahuas, that, that's, that's when we're talking about. So I'm in line, I see this woman with this beautiful chihuahua, and I have to say something. So I'm ooing and aahing and cooing and kai and all that stuff. And so she tells me, she's like, I have more of these, you know, this one's for sale. And I was like, oh, for sale? My eyes lit up even more than they just did now. So I'm like, really? So she tells me, oh yes, 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 I, I have more chihuahuas. I'm just on the other side of town. And so I'm in the town that I worked in Hayward, so I'm close to home. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So I'm ecstatic. I take down her phone number, I take down her address. And I'm like, I wanna see them, blah, blah, blah. I just wanna check them out. So I go home. It's like a five, just eight minute drive home. So I'm driving home and I go to my neighbor's house. And my neighbors, uh, they're like a big, huge family. Their girls were all our age. And so it's been like three generations of, uh, you know, grandparents are friends, their kids are friends. And then now we're the third generation where we're like best friends. So I go over there and my sisters are hanging out over there. And I tell them, oh my gosh, I saw the cutest puppy, blah, blah, blah. Like, it was so cute. Like, I'm going to go look at them. I'm going to go see if I can get one. So how did this work again? So... Okay, so I think I, I think I planned to go see the dogs. I was going to arrange to go see them later that day or the next day. But I knew I would want one. Like, I already knew I wanted that one that she showed me. So I had enough money. Like, that was not the issue. I was getting paid $10 an hour and had no bills. Like, I had money <laughs> to spend. And I think the puppy was like $250 or $300 or something. So anyway, I knew I had to tell my grandma, like I'd have to get permission to come home with the dog. I didn't want to like make some, like sneak the dog home, get found out, and then get the dog gets booted out. Like that's happened before, not booted out, but you know, we have to get rid of it. So I, I was not going to go that route. I was going to go the open and honest route. 
but I, you know, knowing my grandma, knowing that we already had another dog, Chica, rest in peace, she was the best little dog, like, oh, she was great. But so anyway, we already had Chica, who was kind of an older Australian Shepherd mix. So I knew I couldn't just go in and be like, hey, can I get a puppy? That would be a no. So I decided to milk the story a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> so what I did was, I get home from the bank. She didn't know I went to my neighbor's house first to devise this plan. So I go in and I'm like, hey, Graham, how's it, uh, how's it going? And she's like, uh, are you okay? I was like, well, never mind. Yeah, I'm fine. That was not like me. And so she, she pushed it. She's like, are you okay? What's going on? I was like, I just wanted to tell you something, but I know you're not going to believe me. And so she, you know, then now she's trying to milk it. She's like, well, come on, Melissa, tell me what's going on. What happened? I like, well, I was at the bank and I met this lady and she was really, I don't know. She had the cutest little puppy with her and a bunch of puppies. She was trying to sell them outside of the bank because she was trying to pay rent. And I don't know. I just, my, my heart strings were tugged. Like it was $25 her puppy and she had about four or five of them and I just felt bad and I but I know I, I I was gonna get one but I knew that you would get mad and say that we can't afford another dog and you know we already have one blah 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 so I didn't even do it but now I, I just feel bad and, <laughs> and so she's like well Miha, I mean you can go look at them but uh you know you don't have to bring one but if, if they're $25 and you want to go see you can go look at them and I was like Okay, well, I'll go let the neighbors know and maybe we can all go together. I run over there and I'm like hooping and hollering. I'm like celebrating. I'm like, she said yes. <laughs> and so me, Lena, and my sister, Corinne, we all hop in my car and we go to Hayward back the five to eight minutes that way. And then we, you know, plug in that. There was no uh, cell phone. To, no, no, not that. We, uh, what did we do? We map quested the directions. Yes, map quest. This was back in 2006. So yeah, we map quested the directions and we get to the right area and it's a very industrial area. I'm like, is this right? Like, I can't imagine a house being in this area. Like, I, I assumed it was her house. And so then we, we get to the front door. And so it's a warehouse, I guess. It's like where they... Um, fix RVs, like repair them, like a mechanic shop, whatever. And so I'm like, okay. So I walk in, the three of us walk in and there's like a little tiny office. It's all old. It feels like you are in the seventies, you know, like all the pictures are dusty. The edges of everything are crusty, but it's some kind of business. I see diplomas on the wall of some sort. Maybe it's from AAA. I don't know. So anyway, uh, she recognizes me and she's like, oh, come on, come on, this way, this way, I'll show you where the dogs are. We go into this garage and the garage is like, <laughs> it, it's huge and there's like probably two really old RVs in the back and then like one crusty bus kind of closer up, like a 1950s bus or something. And anyway, there's dogs everywhere, not like hundreds of them, but there's probably, you know, six little tiny puppies, like tiny in a box that we're looking at and then there's like five tall chihuahuas running around and then three little ones scurrying like I we didn't know how many were there like some were coming out of the bus a bunch were barking from inside the bus like it was a hot mess and so I'm not like disheartened at all I'm like dogs everywhere I get to have my pick so immediately I go to the box I'm looking for the one that I saw in the bank. And so I see it, I'm like, okay, we'll take that one. Done deal. It's so, like, he was just so cute. He just laid there. It was a girl. I only get girl animals. Um, anyway, that's the feminist in me, I guess. But <laughs> um, So I told him, like, yeah, this is the one I want. And she's, oh, no, 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 that one's not for sale. That one's not for sale. Somebody already has money on that one. And I was like, no, but I'm here now, and I have my 250 in, in hand. Like, I'll take this one. And she says, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't. Like, okay. So then I'm looking for the next small one, because I'm thinking the smaller, the better. That way I can, like, train them and everything. So next one, next little one. So I'm petting it and petting it, and that one throws up. Like, me, Lena, and Corinne, we're all looking at it. I'm like, oh, it's so cute. That one throws up. So then we're like, uh, that might be a bad sign. So that one's eliminated. So then I think the lady can tell that I'm like, uh, what other ones are there? Because I think there was another 
couple, they're like a lady and her husband or something, and they were looking at the other puppy. And then there was the other random ones. And so I think she can tell that I'm a little bit, mm, okay, maybe I will leave empty handed. And so then she said, no, I have one more. And I was like, okay, which one more? Like, is it one of those knobby headed tall ones that's running around? She's like, let me get Coco. And I was like, okay. So I hear her go, Coco, Coco. And then I hear, and then she comes out with Matilda. And so Matilda had long hair, but it was all silky smooth. I have a picture of her somewhere. I'll insert some. But uh, she comes out like a newborn baby, and she has her long hair. But she looked a little crazy. Like, she had a crazy look in her eye. Like, she tried to run away, clearly, when the lady tried to get her. And somehow the lady trapped her and was able to bring her back out from behind the bus. And now she was introducing herself. And so we look, and we're like, well, she's bigger than the really little puppies, but she's not as tall and knobby-headed as the tall deer chihuahuas. So I'm like, well, I, I gotta leave with something. So we, we said, fine, we'll take her. And so on the car ride back, we were trying to think of a name, and I was like, she needs something that's like respectable. I don't want fluffy. I don't want sparky or pinky. No, no, no. She needs a name that demands respect. So we went with Matilda. And that's who we have right here. So anyway, so as the years go by, um, that was in 2006. And so I actually got really, really depressed um, when I went away to school after about a year of being there. So my sophomore year of college at UC Santa Cruz, I got super depressed. Um, it came out of nowhere, which makes me, well, I guess, does anything ever come out of nowhere? But I guess the symptoms came on very strong, like I... Um, I don't know, I'll make a separate video about that. Uh, but it was very sudden, and I think my like childhood traumas and stuff had kind of surfaced, um, but without me even realizing it. So uh, in 2008, I first was ho hospitalized for a suicide attempt. Um, and it's weird, because I don't really, I, it's not like I don't talk about it, but I guess I feel like the people around me know so much about my struggle and they know how hard those years were. Um, I think, so it started in 2008, my, I call it my Great Depression. My depression, my depression was very cyclical, so I'd be fine during the summertime, but the wintertime I would dive deep, like my um, no energy, suicidal thoughts, I would attempt, I'd end up in hospitals. It was very hard on my family, I, I'm so sorry for what I put my family through. Um, I've been healthy and stable now for three years, so no hospitalizations, no attempts. I'm so proud um, because between 2008 and 2014, I had at least one suicide attempt or hospitalization each year. And um, I know that sounds like crazy, like how can you attempt, like I, it was such a chemical imbalance that I feel like I got fixated on the thoughts of death Anyway, like I just, I obsessed with not wanting to be here. It wasn't even so much of my life is so bad. It was just that I want to, I want anything except for this. Like I was just so tired. I felt so stuck. Um, but so Matilda became my emotional support animal in 2008 officially. So she was like two and two to two and a half years old. Um, I was hospitalized in Stanford Hospital, which is like one of the best ones in my area. And it was my longest stay, which was three weeks. Um, and it was it was a really good facility. So like I was able to have my cell phone and like they wanted you to be comfortable, but they also needed you to be in therapy every day. They needed to monitor your, med monitor your medication and all of that. So uh, when I was in there, I really missed Matilda because I had had her with me every day at home when I was living at Graham's. So my family knew that and they knew how much she meant to me. And so we undertook what we called Operation Brown Bag. And so uh, basically my sister was gonna put Matilda in her favorite brown purse. And yeah, she's a purse dog, don't judge her. She has little tiny legs. So when she gets tired, she's gotta get in her purse. And she has also, also has a backpack and a side pack. But anyway, so Operation Brown Bag. My family came to visit me. They put Matilda in her bag, and she's used to being in there because she loves hanging out in there. When we go shopping, when we go for walks, she'll just hang out in there uh, when she gets tired. And so, yeah, they get into the hospital, they check in, and so her head just sticks out in the brown bag that's furry like her. 
And so when they had to like actually check in with security or whatever, they just put like their sweatshirt kind of like hanging over so they couldn't see her face. And so they gave her to me. So they came into my room. I got to see her. I got to play with her on my bed, check in with her. And um, I think that was the moment that it really, uh, that it really shifted. Like I realized how much she meant to me. And when I saw her, I lit up. I felt like everything around us kind of disappeared. And uh, we got to play and hug and kiss and it was so sweet. And I actually have a picture of it. My aunt took a picture of that from that day. So it says, a special visit from Matilda. Look at me, I'm like a little kid and Matilda's a little girl too. So that was 2008. I remember um, watching President Obama do his inauguration actually in the hospital. Isn't that touching? And look at us now. My, how far we've come, Matilda. Can you pretend to let, love me still? Uh, kind of. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I, we got to check in and say hi. And then I was allowed to go out on the patio. Like, it's a secured patio, of course. You're able to go check out. You have to sign out. The cameras can see you. And then you can go out and have some time in the sun. And no um, nurse has to go with you or anything because there's cameras and they... I was on a certain level, so I didn't need that much, um, I guess, supervision outside. So anyway, I just asked if I could go outside for a few minutes, and I had her in the bag with the little sweatshirt hanging over so nobody could see her. And we go into the patio, and it was, that's like one of the most beautiful moments I've ever had with Matilda. I think I was so broken in many ways because I had just tried to kill myself. I just tried to get out of here. I was so depressed. I was so not myself. I was so, the, the depression had taken over me. But then they found me and I was, you know, rushed to the emergency room. I was revived or whatever. My stomach was pumped. And then I was in Stanford Hospital. And then I was there at least a week. And I missed her. I was learning so much more. I got on my medication. I got the right medic. Or got the right. I got some medication that seemed to help. And so ha being able to have Matilda with me and then be in the place where I made friends and I had doctors that I felt understood me and were supportive of me. And then I got to show her the garden and we got to walk around. We were sitting in the sunshine. Like sunshine is our favorite thing. So she loves to sunbathe. I love to sunbathe. We both get to work on our beautiful tans. Um, so that was just awesome. It was a beautiful moment. And so from then on, I knew it was something more than just like, oh, me and my dog. It was more than that. She's my best friend. And I've actually had her longer than I ever knew my mom, like my birth mom. Um, she died on my seventh birthday, actually. So Matilda's 11, or gonna be 11. So we're very close. And how she helps me, like how she became my emotional support animal uh, was that I was in a program in 2014 um, and I had been in programs before then, like day programs and different ones, but I was in a residential program for about three or four months. And during that time, I lived in a house with other people that are part of the program. And then I also had an apartment where I shared it with one girl who's in the program. And so, uh, I had told them that like, I have Matilda and she helps me a lot. And like, I always said that, uh, meditation, medication and Matilda are like what have helped me get better. And so when I really had a serious talking with the doctor and explained how what she does and how she's helped me and how during the darkest days of my depression, I wouldn't want to get up. I had no energy. To, I had no motivation to get out of bed. But then I realized she needed me to get out of bed. She needed to go to the bathroom outside. She loves going for walks. She needed all of that stuff. Sorry, there was a notification on my phone. I realized she needed me just as much as I needed her, or even more so, more so. And so then I realized I wanted to get up even just for her because seeing her on a walk, seeing her running around at the park, smiling like this made my day, made my day worth it. And so as selfish as that sounds, just her being her, made my life worth living, you know? It was a shift and she's she's taught me patience. She's taught me how to have a routine. She requires a routine, you know? And I didn't know that I needed that structure. 
she's done so much for me. Like, and so I told this all to the doctor in the program. I explained how she gets me out of bed. She helps me feel calm. I don't have very many friends because I'm an introvert that comes across as an extrovert, which makes it very tricky for people. So she's like my perfect little buddy. I can do homework. I can go out. I can walk. She, she, she does all of it with me. And then I feel like I'm not doing it alone. Um, and so now we live alone for the first time. This is my little studio. We've been here a year and a half. And we've just gotten closer than ever before. We, you know, we have to have even more of a routine because I'm away at school for hours and hours at a time and she's a little bit older. And so we've just grown so much together and now she's a senior and now she's having heart issues and it's really hard. Um, but... Uh, it's really hard, but but I try to just appreciate all the time that we do have still. She's just the best. And so, yeah, she has her badge. So what makes her official is that my doctor from the program uh, wrote me a note on like letterhead and typed up and everything, just saying that Melissa is my patient. She has her emotional support animal, Matilda Veal. <laughs> Matilda Veal. <laughs> and yeah, he just said, if you have any questions, you can call me at this number. And this is my doctor information. And yeah, and that's all you need. So at school, at the university, I showed them that and a few other pieces of uh, official paperwork from like hospitals and stuff. And so they recognized her as my working dog. So now she can go with me to every class or any class. And um, she also has like a little badge, but I got that one online. Like those are easy to get. They don't require any kind of like um, official paperwork. But I got those just because it's easier when I go to like grocery stores or if I go to a restaurant I can just show them that and then they don't ask any more questions but legally all she really needs is just the doctor's note saying that I have a medical condition depression post-traumatic stress disorder anxiety and she helps me with my symptoms and I have encountered um, many times people that don't get it where they think, oh, that's cute. Well, everybody loves their dog or she's just a dog. Like you don't need to, I think you're doing too much by trying to get her recognized by a doctor. And even some doctors say, oh, I don't, I don't do that. And that's fine because I know how she's helped me. I know that at times when I did want to just run away, end my life, try to whatever, I would think, like, how would she feel? How would she, how would her heart break? And I, I know I have to think of my family too, but at that time in the earlier days of my Great Depression, I couldn't, my, thinking of my family missing me didn't, it didn't register, it didn't make sense in my head. And then finally my sister told me, she was like, Melissa, if Matilda came up to you and said, I'm a bad dog, I peed on the carpet, I chewed up your new sandals, it's the fourth pair I chewed up, you just need to let me end my life, like just give me my leash, I'll take myself out and you'll never see me again. Would you say okay, would, would, you, would, you, would you get it and you know, let her do it? No, would you ever, would you ever be okay knowing that she felt so bad about peeing on the carpet and chewing up another pair of sandals that she, you wouldn't hurt if she ended her life? And that brought me to tears because I thought, like, I really thought my family would be better off without me. But when she put it to me that way, and I realized that my love for Matilda is what my family has for me, it clicked, you know? It's all been a process, and it's it's been such a journey, but I feel so lucky to have been able to do it with Matilda. And we have so many memories, and I, I just love her so much. And so, yeah, you'll probably see more of her and make some more videos, hopefully healthy, fun, happy ones. But yeah, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, as for pick, like official certification of an emotional support animal, those don't exist. Those websites are just out for 40 bucks. Those are just for your money. Um, all you need in California, at least, or 
yeah, to be recognized as an emotional support animal, not a service dog, but an emotional support animal, is a, a letter from a doctor. So, alrighty, have a good day, guys. Adios. Say bye, Matilda. Adios. Mm-hmm. <laughs>